good morning and welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up in this morning show, meet the kids and the collaborators behind the largest kids orchestra in the country. It's Baton Rouge born and 800 kids strong. How one woman's dream hit just the right note. The idea here is that we meet the other people in our community. Plus, we survived Black Friday with an eye now to Cyber Monday. But how about really getting some bang for your buck? It's new and it's called Giving Tuesday. Find out all about it. Then Dr. Nick discusses addiction, how a family system can help or hinder recovery and how to know the difference. But first, the largest kids orchestra in the country, and it's right here in our capital city. How it's creating something bigger, bolder, and more powerful than music. instruments are nearly as big as the budding musicians playing them. What they're doing is big too, on every level. Kids Orchestra Executive Director Jody Anne. We tap into the, that area of their brain um, that they don't always get. It's the brainchild of businesswoman Nanette Nolan but it's rooted in something more than music, more than education. It swelled from her desire to build a stronger community from the bottom up. We purposely mix children because the idea here is that we meet the other people in our community. And so we make that happen with Kids Orchestra and half the kids get on a bus to go to a different school than they are uh, attending. And so you meet, get to meet your neighbor. Eight hundred K through fifth grade public, parochial, charter, and homeschool children come from 20 different schools to 11 teaching sites, all to learn about music and each other. Claiborne Elementary is one of those. It has truly been a win-win situation for both the community as well as the school. We both benefit from this collaboration. Our students are learning skills such as perseverance, collaboration, as they learn to play instruments, problem solve, and those are lifelong skills. Kids Orchestra expanded to Claiborne and several other sites just this fall after winning a generous $600,000 federal grant. It doubled the nonprofit's money, music to everyone's ear. It not only afforded that we would be able to give the children more music, not just twice a week like our other programs, but four times a week. So we could do that and we could offer the children academic enrichment in an area that needs it most. In addition to almost a daily hour of music, these kids get an hour of tutoring too. So I tutor them in math and ELA. I pull small groups um, because, you know, we want to ensure that these students are getting ahead. I help with homework, mm -hmm. um, but we focus mainly on reading um, and, and the math skills. Skills enhanced by music. Believe it or not, we, I did a, a lesson with uh, second graders in multiplication, and it kind of morphed into a fraction lesson, and they were able to understand it because they understood what a quarter note was, what a half note, what a whole note was. And so I was able to actually teach fractions to second graders. Okay, here you go. Get ready? One, two, ready, go. No one skipped a beat when the historic flood hit just a week into the school year. Were you nervous after the flood? 
I was just totally optimistic about it. We didn't think about the challenges. We only thought about how to get things rolling again and get everything back on track. Even though 100 school buses were no longer rolling and students from flooded Howell Park Elementary relocated to Claiborne, they never lost their rhythm. And Kids Orchestra has never been bigger. It started five years ago with 50 kids. In its second year, it had 75. That's when Jody came on board. Her mission was clear. My board said to me, go get the kids. So I said, okay, <laughs> we'll go get the kids. The next year, they had 500 kids. So it wasn't hard to get the kids? No, <laughs> no, it wasn't hard to get the kids because we got the goods. We've got music. Jody shares that love of music. She's an opera singer and former music teacher. But like in many schools, she felt the kids weren't getting enough. One of those ladies pushing the cart around and I had this big keyboard on top and the, and the wheel was broken. And um, you know, like the kind that you take back in the grocery store because it doesn't work. You're right. That was me, okay. And so I had this keyboard on top and, and I, I was thinking, what am I doing? This, this is really hard. I'm teaching 500 kids you know, music once a week, you oh. know, and it was, it was really defeating um, because the, get, the kids were getting so little music. Even the little ones get an abundance in kids' orchestra. I get the kindergartners, yeah, I get the babies. <sighs> Who you would think would be really, you think you would have to really like break everything down, but they're very smart. Are they limited to what instruments they can play at that young age? With <laughs> me, they're getting the foundation of music. Okay. Okay, so we're playing like the xylophone. We're playing the percussion, non-pitch percussion instruments like uh, the cymbals, the bells, the... Um, the triangle. So they're really getting a, um, a foundation playing those types of instruments mm -hmm. in hopes that they are really learning the, the skills that where they can move on to the violin and to the cello and the percussion instruments. From there, in addition to their school orchestra, they can also be part of the honors orchestra. The Big Red Orchestra, or the new Kids Orchestra Choir. This brings all of these kids from all over the city together. Mm. It doesn't matter where you live, you know, how much money you make, you, it doesn't matter. You're all together in the orchestra. They're in harmony on a grand scale. When this younger generation connects, so do older generations in the audience. It breaks down barriers because we're all guilty of too often staying in our comfort zone. How many people do you know from the other side of town? How many people, how many times have you gone and eaten lunch in a different part of town? How many times have you eaten lunch with someone that doesn't look like you? Piercing questions perhaps we should all examine. Here though, music's unique and unifying power mutes the noise of life. Music is like one of those, it's like a language that we can all identify with or on some level understand and so it just helps, you know, cross all kinds of boundaries. Today about 2% of elementary kids in EBR Parish are part of the kids orchestra. But Jody wants to double that and the school's offering it. And that's our plan is to try to get all the way across um, East Baton Rouge Parish so that the kids orchestra is accessible to any child that wants to be in the program. That'll take additional donations, but she knows she can get the kids. Kids vote with their feet. So if you have something good, the kids are gonna show up and they do. Children like Malaysia and Nadia, who are working on their first duet. What have you learned about what it takes to pull off a duet? 
you have to practice each a couple of times and then you can start yeah, like then, mixing it up together. I played on the A string and she had played on the D string. This opportunity gives them an extra layer, layer of learning mm -hmm. by, as I said, learning to persevere, learning to work well with others, to problem solve. They're learning music, they're learning art, and that spans across all disciplines. You're very musical. It has been a passion <laughs> of your life. Yes. But tell me what these children get out of it. There's so much talk about STEM, and STEM is great science, technology, engineering, math. But what we're concentrating on is creating the whole child and helping, uh, helping create the, the well-rounded little educated child. And music is that extra piece. That's the piece that, that brings it all together. It's so important to start children at a very young and early age to, te you know, to help them l to feel that creativity, to learn to be creative, um, and to, um, to open the door and give them the opportunity to be creative. And that's what we do. That's what we do at Kids Orchestra. If you'd like to know more about the program or their upcoming performances, Log on to their website, kidsorchestra.org. And still to come, another innovative way folks are joining forces to create a stronger community. In this season of giving, I'll show you how to really stretch your dollar. Then Dr. Nick peels back the onion on addiction and family dynamics. How do you best help a loved one on their road to recovery? The answers might surprise you as Weekends with Whitney continues. Maggio, the only way to go. Maggio Buick GMC, your satisfaction's our specialty. We really deliver on Fault River here in New Roads. Small town atmosphere, legendary service for over 60 years. Maggio, the only way to go. The only way to go, that's Maggio. Nine-time winner of the prestigious Buick GMC Mark of Excellence Award. Welcome back to Weekends with Whitney. The madness of Black Friday is behind us. The insanity of Cyber Monday ahead of us. And so is a whole new concept, Giving Tuesday. There are hundreds of gifts you could drop your money into this holiday season, but Kelly Pepper wants us to think outside the box. She's unwrapped a new way to uplift and strengthen our community. It's Give Baton Rouge Day, known across the web as hashtag GiveBR. It's one simple way this Tuesday you can donate to nearly 100 nonprofits. It's a great collective day for um, the nation and our community to sort of say Baton Rouge is important and the work that the nonprofit sector is important and we want to recognize that. Um, and so we're going to make this charitable gift on this particular day in order to elevate the status and the awareness of the nonprofit sector in building a vibrant and healthy Baton Rouge. After August's historic flooding, most nonprofits need it more now than ever. They poured millions into the relief effort. And Kelly says now, some of them are barely treading water. We have a lot of organizations that are really having hard times raising their um, money for goals, um, particularly with their annual campaigns. So we hope that Give Baton Rouge will be a good platform for them to reach a new donor base. A lot more work lies ahead. Rob Godet sees it every day. He's helping the nonprofit organization rebuild Livingston. There's so much need. You know, you drive through the neighborhoods where the floods happened and you don't see piles of debris anymore, but if you walk into these houses, 
you're going to see shells of houses. You're going to see empty homes, and you're going to see studs. Even for nonprofits not working the front lines of the flood aftermath, the needs of their clients have never subsided. So we still have those people who are fighting issues of cancer, fighting issues of Alzheimer's. We have children who need after school programs. We, you know, have people who need food and those who need housing. The Louisiana Art and Science Museum is one of many nonprofits participating. Development director Aaron Kupner says they didn't hesitate. Donations will fund new exhibitions and planetarium shows. I think that um, the Give BRD presents a really wonderful opportunity for the community to come together, especially after a summer that's just been so taxing for a lot of people. I think this will be a great way for people to kind of just release all that tension in a positive way and affect real change in our community. Donating is easy. Go to givebr.org and pick a nonprofit you like or choose from a category you're interested in. And there are organizations that are involved in arts and culture, in healthcare, um, in children's services, in health and human services. So whatever interest level you have, uh, there's an organization that should fit your needs. For instance, under youth development, you can choose from Kids Orchestra that we featured earlier on today's show, the Big Buddy Program, Girls on the Run, and many more. Social media is a big driver for this one day campaign. Rob, who specializes in social media, says it's the perfect platform. Look, social media is the way that people connect in today's world. And the millennials can connect with the uh, baby boomers using social media. And so why not all work together through this campaign to have an impact and have a real impact on lives. It's the perfect Christmas gift to sort of uh, say, hey, I'd like to um, make a gift to this organization in honor of someone I love um, who loves the work that this organization does and give an early Christmas present not only to the nonprofit but also to the individual that they're honoring. For a complete list of all of the nonprofits participating and to donate, log on to givebr.org. And still to come, Dr. Nick. How to empower and rebuild your family system when addiction marches in after this. Classic Hits 1033, Scott Innes, welcome to the ride home. Put the seat belts on, hug the babies when you get there. Hey Scott, coffee, water, uh, trash need emptying? Hey Chris, we're good man, thanks for checking in. Sure. Uh, appreciate it. checking good, in. Sure. Yeah. Hey, and by the way, I'm playing Beth just for you today. You too much, man. I love you. Oh, I, I know give you, you a yeah. No, that's okay. Yeah, seriously. Sure. We're, we're good, seriously. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah. Scott Ennis is back on 103.3 Classic Hits. When someone is suffering with a true addiction, oftentimes we think it's that person and it's that person's problem. But really, addiction is a whole family situation. And Dr. Nick joins us this morning with that. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Whitney. And thanks for t talking about this subject. We're, yes. we're not talking to addicts today. We're talking to families of addicts. And what can we do to help? Brothers and sisters and parents. And yeah, and, and, and love family. I mean, I mean, friends who are like family, yeah. even coworkers sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, it's really, I think, important for people to understand that it is a family problem or that, that families are affected and maybe even inflicted by that behavior. It's, it's a just family it's, situation. It's a family situation. But what we need to be clear about is that families will, it's sometimes one or the other. It's just his problem. He's got to work on it. I'm going to send him to therapy with Dr. Nick, which makes me want to pull my hair out. Really? But, yes, because I want to know the system. Ah. I want to know how the family's treating this behavior, how they may be enabling it. Mm. Or, 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 or shaming the addict, which does no good. So, but, but anyway, they can go one or the other, which is it's his or her problem, or they can say, what did I do? Well, I would think How that would did I wrong. cause it? What, and what can I do to save or to change or to help? And really, neither are truly the, the, the path. The path is in the middle. The, in, in the middle in the sense, yes, it's his or her disease, behavior, a, a, a pattern, compulsive activity, but the family can either reinforce it or change their behaviors 
which in turn will impact and influence the addict. For instance, you don't give a glass of wine to a recovering alcoholic and say it's okay. You don't give somebody to so, money to somebody that doesn't have a job and hasn't worked in six months mm. and says, well, I'm just getting off of opiates and I can't do anything. Do, do you hear how we can, we, we, it, at what point do, do the parents have to say enough? You have to enough. do the other things in your life to rebuild. You, you have to. And, and what really makes it complicated is that, that the family has to say, this is what it is doing to affect me. Mm -hmm. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what it's doing to affect me. Is that powerful for the it's addict? It's very powerful. And, and what happens to my children when you're over there drunk? Mm. And how they read that. You're not aware of your behaviors and what it does to our relationship when you do it. But the other thing that needs to be also kind of reinforced is this notion of empowerment meaning that there are consequences to your behavior. Right. And, and you'll lose the, you know, I, I'm providing you with a cell phone right now during your recovery, but you keep having relapses. Not going to work. Right. You're going to lose it. Right. I'm letting you live here now, but I'm letting you if live you're here. just going back to drugs every time, I'm letting this you live is obviously is really right. not a solution that's working. Right. Here's a list of things that have been done through therapy to help you do it. You're supposed to be going to AA or NA. If you choose that you don't want to do it, you're obviously telling me that you don't want help, and I'm going to not help. And for family, sometimes How? that is impossible. Whitney, please know that I'm not saying this without an, an immense amount of compassion. Right. But you know at what point do we say it's not working? This system is not working. Mm -hmm. I think you've been really in some ways privileged with a, a really fairly healthy family, but there are many out there that just want to pull their hair out because they don't want to say you've got to go right. or we're going to put you in a halfway house. Well, I had a family or, member who had um, a surgery on, on a leg and got addicted to stupid Oxycontin. Pain pills, which is so easy. <clears throat> But, but I, can I tell you that my mother finally, after like the third um, rehab. Relapse? Oh, yeah, rehab. Rehab. Wow. She was like, I am done. And something else happened. You know, they say everybody's bottom's different. And, and that person hit bottom and did it Got through. solo. Got then my mother and other people and family members of gathered course. around and lifted up, but uh, she was done. It's not rejection. It's I'm done enabling it. Mm. I, because what we end up doing as a family is we're enabling the self-destruction. We're enabling the slow suicide. Yeah. You see, and, and as hard as it is, it's, it's just to me there's a compelling force that says the family is important. You know, and it's also important to the recovery in the, in, in the sense of, again, good boundaries. I, I just felt like families needed to hear there is a way. And, and the, there is they, a way. Right. And, and to tackle it as a unit, if you can, with a professional. Don't let someone go solo. I, 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 would, I would certainly think tackle it. I, I tell you, Whitney, I really have gotten to where I will say when, they wanna, when someone wants to come in, I, I want to I meet the family. I want to know the dynamic because so many things will come out. Mm -hmm. So many things will come out. There can be a parent that has no idea that he's shaming his daughter. But every time she, she, she goes on an alcohol, it's, it's you're worthless. You're never going to amount to anything. Do, do you hear? Mm -hmm. All it does is make her... And I'm not taking away her responsibility. Of I'm course. saying that he doesn't realize what he's doing. Sure. He's contributing. Right, right. Right. You're thinking. You, 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 it's real, isn't it? No, yeah. I it bet is. it concerns you. You have children. Right. You don't know what's out there. Right. And, and they could have surgery and get on opiates and then a whole, all of a sudden become. Yeah. There was a show on CNN on world. prescription. Oh, I wanted to see that. Yeah, on CNN. They did it a couple of weeks ago or last week. I'm I not think sure it's a national it. epidemic. I, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know what the solution and is. And then maybe families have to look at themselves. I don't know what mom and daddy's doing. Maybe they're on prescription drugs. Maybe they have to look at some of their own behaviors. Sure, sure. Or, or some of the pains from the past mm -hmm. on each side, you know, that sometimes contribute yeah. to that. And, and just, to, just to quickly close on a positive note, yes. the great thing about m making the changes is that we're giving everyone a choice. Mm -hmm. You're you right. can You can find a, a, another way of handling your stress or you can move out.
Let me ask you one last question. And this is, um, you know, in your professional role, if the addict won't get help, is it still beneficial to for other family members to go and seek counseling? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Because again, if I can help them make changes, that's going to influence. In fact, the addict is not going to like me very much. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. And, which, and it's also okay for the addict to get angry at parents. That's okay. All I said was, you don't, you, you keep doing it, you're going to lose your cell phone. You don't need to get mad at me. You just need to abide by the rules of the house. Right. Because life is full of consequences. Yeah. So yes, definitely they can get help. Okay. And really need to. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks so much, Dr. Nick. Thank you, you, Whitney. I was thinking, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> much more Weekends with Whitney coming up right after this. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. I hope you're enjoying a relaxing, fulfilling holiday, and I appreciate you sharing some of it here with me. Hope to see you back here again next week. Until then, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This morning, we leave you with something we've been following. <laughs>